What's up tribe? Thank you for being here and welcome to my channel. Today's post is titled Handel and it is a dialogue between Matthias and his higher self. So I'd be referring to Matthias as me and his higher self as I am. Me. Yesterday's message made me understand several things, but among all of this, two fundamental ideas were clear to me. One, the first is that we usually become what we deny by polarity. And the second is that the concepts that we have of things are not the truth, but the perceptions according to the facts or ties that we have created with the concept to be treated. That is, in the first case, I saw that denying religion, for example, makes us look for a new dogma to follow in order to judge the previous one. Basically, if I side with science in judging religion, I am making science my new dogma, which is open to criticism for using the same methods of judgment. In the second case, it implies that the idea of religion did not arise to oppress minds, but to unite them and give them a voice in a network. The concept we have today, negative, of a religion, is by the events that the individuals of the same have carried out throughout history. Under this argument, we could say that all science is bad because it is science that created the atomic bomb. I am. Everything we see in our lives are only emotional and sentimental perspectives. The filters of being. Contemplating the realities. Your nature is to prejudge because everything that comes to you is filtered by your experience and knowledge of things. This is what generates so many battles in the world, most of them unnecessary and absurd, that separate men from women, whites from blacks, left and right, heaven and hell, religion and science, and so many others. The only truth is that you are all everything, and you cannot escape any of the opposites. As in a magnet, the more you try to get away from the opposing force, the harder it will be to collapse when confronting it. As much as you deny your opposite, it will return to you in one way or another, and the crisis will occur when you see that you have become what you judged. Me. In what way? I am. For example, let's take the fire. In a first encounter with fire, it amazes you because it is amazing. It gives heat, light, generates colors, consumes things, but it surprises you until you burn. The moment you touch the fire and your nervous system immediately interprets that that beautiful element generates pain. What it does is put a judgment on it. Judgment comes from Latin judus, which means to indicate. In a way, the concept speaks of putting a judgment on something. It's basically labeling it and indicating which category it belongs to. Thus, in your future, you will no longer need to burn yourself when you see fire. You will understand that whether it is an amber, flame, fire, a candle, a spark, a bonfire, or a grill, your brain will indicate in advance the possible results, painful to touch. Indicating in advance is said pre-trial. Me. Now I understand why prejudices are useful then. But what about the prejudices that we say we have to eliminate? 
I am. Fire burns, but it also cooks. Helps herb water to kill microbes and bacteria in it. It makes you warm in the winter. Reduce the remains of a crop. Heat the bath for a good shower. It gives light on a dark and moonless night. Stops the spread of disease through cremation. It allows you to melt elements, create tools, and make alchemy and medicine. Fire not only burns and produces pain, but many other benefits. When the human discovered fire, he began to cook meat and other foods. Stopping eating raw food generated a chemical reaction that improved the connectivity of the neurotransmitters in the brain, causing humans to become Homo sapiens sapiens, intelligent beings. Imagine if because of the prejudice of the fire burns, never touch it, nobody would ever have cooked. Me, I understand. Prejudice helps to identify, but limits us in experimentation. I am believing that a culture is bad, deprives us of cultural expansion, the enrichment of thoughts and ideas. Racism prevents the improvement of the species. Since a more mixture of genes, better adaptable to all climates and terrains, as well as expanding intellectual capacities, all prejudices help you to identify the world so that you don't have to start from zero every day, allowing you to have a previous baggage with which to face reality. As having learned the letters helps you to read any text. But if you think that only your letters are the good ones, your world will be reduced to the languages that write with your alphabet, depriving you of the enrichment of other countries, cultures, and knowledge. Me, the same thing that makes us be and understand the world is what limits us and takes us away from it. I am the paradox of existence, the very thing that preserves your life and integrity is what prevents you from living your life for fear of losing that integrity. But this mechanism works only at the level of unconsciousness because when you turn to the world of consciousness, prejudice becomes an indicator as such, but not a limitation. Nobody's free from prejudices, but you can use them freely. Me, in what way? I am. When you talk about generalities, for example, phrases like whites are like this, the Chinese are this way, blacks do it that way, Christians are like this, Muslims are like this. Everyone usually uses generalities. There are prejudices, which group concepts, and they are not wrong. They help us to conceptualize, to understand qualities and defects of a collective mind. When you talk about a specific history or a geography, they have shaped the psyche of a people, language, culture, religion, and you can understand many people through general concepts which helps you understand from prejudice what you can take or stop them, what is useful for you, and where you can assess its qualities. The negative aspect lies in cataloging everyone as equal without allowing the idea that each individual in the group, in turn, it has singularities. The concept of individual passed to that of family and from family to people. 
from people to culture, from culture to nation, and from nation to race, and from race to species, which means that the individual, without finding his own potential, his ability to be who he really is, relegates his power to the closest group and the family, that group, for fear of feeling displaced, relegates power to a larger group of families that it calls Pueblo. And so the generalities that give rise to the great preconceptions and prejudices of history are generated. Thus, after generations, it becomes part of the essence causing individuals to become confused as simple members of the group, imitating their actions, and no matter how much I distance myself or deny my group and decide to seclude myself naturally within myself. Me. It is the typical thing that is said, that no matter how far you escape from your problems, they will follow you because they were always inside you. I am, exactly, because it is cellular information anchored in the central nervous system. For this very reason, people who seek freedom feel imprisoned everywhere they go, and the more they open their eyes, the more they realize that the system is the same, and they feel imprisoned in it, calling it the matrix because they feel trapped in prejudices, because what they see of the world is from emotional filters. Pay attention and you will see that Native Americans throughout America, especially the people of the jungles and steppe, did not know the concept of freedom, simply because they did not conceive the concept of slavery. Thus freedom is a natural state, not something to be earned, in the same way work for the Amerindian peoples. The notion of work did not exist as in the European world. Therefore, nor was there the concept of earning bread with sweat or suffering to be successful, because they knew that Mother Nature gave them everything and that they always had what they needed if they knew how to observe and live in harmony with the environment. On the other hand, Europeans always had to fight for the few resources generated in the scarce summer months in limited territories, which implied that earning their bread was an effort, a battle against the climate and the enemies. Effort and work are concepts of slavery in which servants were threatened with a three-stick whip at the end, with which they received punishment if there was no effort. Trepalos became the Latin word tripelium. Tripalium, if I'm saying that right. Origin of the word work, clearly different in the Saxon languages which comes from the word yarken, which means to act, fulfill, do. Even so, the Latin concept has been transferred through the Christian religion to the whole world by colonialism. And the Protestant concept of hard work have manifested themselves in the capitalist vision of economic culture since the Industrial Revolution, as well as in the Christian sects such as Work of God, Opus Dei. If you put a European in front of a Native American, the European will think that the Native is lazy, and lazy waiting for things to come to him by magic, while the Native will think the European that he is an ambitious, selfish man who believes that to live, you have to suffer. Both preconceptions and prejudices have been created through the personal and cultural contexts 
and experiences of each group. Now, which one's right? Me, none, I guess. I am, yes, none. And at the same time, they are both right. I mean, there is no one correct way to do things. Everyone will agree to one thing. The earth gives us, and with what it gives us, we make. And that is just another of those evolutionary processes that has made us who we are. There are hands, the hands of the hominoid have given the ability to create things, shape tools, but above all, in humans, they have also allowed them to shape ideas, intangibles. While hominoids take a stick and a stone with their hands, they shape it into tools to dig, get roots, grind grain, or do hundreds of other useful daily actions to survive. Humans have managed to create a pencil, a brush, and a chisel, and thus design art, poetry, science. This is when you discover the concept of using your hands to create, something you know in Latin as manipulate. And this is the concept I wanted to get to. Evolutionary, the hominoid developed his hands to manipulate his environment. And when thanks to the fire he developed his mind, he realized that he could manipulate ideas as well. Me. This is where the prejudice or preconception we have of the word manipulation comes from. Applied to governments, religions, philosophies, spirituality, cultures, and many others. I am... Manipulating is seen today as the way to control groups and individuals. Those groups we are talking about, over which the individual relegated her power, are easy to manipulate into ideas. And the reason is simple. It is easier to shape an idea for a group of thousands of people who share the same prejudice than for thousands of individuals with different prejudices among themselves. Therefore, it is easier to create a weak, repetitive education based on memorization and competition than to generate an education of creatives and free thinkers. Thousands know how to manipulate materials. Few know how to manipulate minds. But we all know how to manipulate the same. Me. What? I am emotions. Manipulation is fundamentally emotional, so you are controlled by fear, hunger, needs, sex, and love. Emotions are the basic energy of action, the creative fuel for the personal power of being. If you lose the ability to connect with yourself, you will not know the power that you have in you, and you will waste energy, ceasing to be creative, to become an automaton. You relegate the energy power to the automatism of the group. You become irresponsible of yourself and you hand over the responsibility to another, be it a leader, boss, guide, politician, savior, etc. By not manipulating your own energy, it moves with the current and becomes manipulated by someone outside. Then, at that moment, an evolutionary mechanism becomes a limiting and it becomes a manipulation system. Me. And so we all manipulate. I am. Oh yeah, right. The creative capacity is due to the energetic power of the sacrum. There, in your vitality gestating uterus, you will find the key that allows you to manifest. From the Latin, make a party with your hands, and therefore your hands manipulate your inner power to translate your ideas into the matter. 
But sometimes that energy is not ours and we look for it in the emotional and sentimental ties that we have with others. There, what you do is become a parasite, a bacteria or a virus, which uses the energy of the other as if it were clay, manipulating their being. Me, it's horrible to realize this. I am, but necessary. Before dismantling the manipulation of a whole system of planetary prejudices and control, you must disarticulate it in your own inner world. Don't you think that acting from there is much more coherent? Me. Yes, of course. Obviously. Putting myself to judge the manipulation of external systems without recognizing that one also does it in their day-to-day -day with those closest to them is hypocritical. I am. Um, when we talked about denying religion because of its manipulation, now do you understand how this manipulation was achieved? Me. Yes, I understand. And therefore, I understand that it is not religion or science or a government, but the set of individuals who have made it systematic to relegate power to the group for fear of being rejected. I am, for this reason, today's task is to write your own emotional manipulations. The question is, how and who do you emotionally manipulate in your life? This question implies the idea that manipulation seeks to use the energy or capacity of the other in order to achieve an end to a need of my own that I cannot satisfy myself. The manipulations can be of all kinds. Me, from saying phrases like, would you give me that which is on the table, please? But with a tone of sorrow, sadness, or condescension to nobody will love you more than me, which can create an insecurity in the other to believe that it is impossible to feel loved by others, and many other worst examples that I can't even think of. I am. The sacred is creation. To create, you need your hands. The human evolved in the mind and therefore can creatively manifest ideas. This allows you to manipulate reality according to your prejudices and from them control the environment by manipulating it to your needs and whims. When I don't know how to manipulate my own inner strength, I will let others manipulate it. Be a victim or a victimizer. Manipulation will always be emotional. When you seek to be free from the circuit, you will recognize the manipulation of the system. And in order to free yourself, you must take personal power again, which will inevitably lead you to face your own manipulations. Ask yourself the question. Ask yourself. Write down each manipulation that you recognize in yourself. Me. I can write in one column the manipulations that others have put on me and in another column the manipulations that I have put on others. I am, yes, exactly. And above all, return to being able to manipulate your own strength. Me, I manipulate my own energy. I am my own creator.